Hello, I'm Intralysium, and um, today GameStop want to increase the level of the pre-order bonuses that you get through them. It's not just, you know, currently you go to a store and you're like, oh, I will pre-order so game with you. I mean, you shouldn't, but a lot of people do. I'll pre-order this game with you or this game with you. And they're like, oh, if you pre-order it with us, you get a different color baseball cap. And if you pre-order it with us, you get a special skin for your Ferrari. And this is a common thing, right? Pre-order bonuses, small art assets. What games have done recently is they've announced that they're trying to work closer together with publishers and developers to actually get you exclusive gameplay content. Right, I hate pre-orders, as you know, probably, because there's no point in them. Uh, you get small bonuses for a game that will probably be shit when it comes out, and then you don't get to find out shit because you've already pre-ordered it. I mean, for them, it's brilliant, because that's money in the bank for them. Um, but at least I can understand small, like, art assets and stuff, because, right, the way it works is, if you're getting a free cosmetic thing with a pre-order, is the art team who do, you know, they'll do the concept for the thing, and then, you know, the devs will be like, okay, we'll actually, you know, the actual codes will be like, okay, we'll start building it based on that. And then they'll, you know, do a couple of textures or whatever, you know, general stuff. But when you get to the end, you're doing the bug crunching and the, the, the small gameplay changes, the people in the art department are basically done. They have nothing to do with bug changes and well, bug fixes and, and gameplay changes. The people in the art department are basically sitting there twiddling their thumbs going, what do we do today? Well, I don't know. So the whole, well, why don't we make them do the exclusive pre-order content? Small art assets, different color bloody baseball caps and Ferraris. That makes, that makes sense, right? You're giving a department that's basically got no work to do a job. That's fine. Like, I do not mind that. I mean, I don't like pre-orders in general, but I don't mind them doing work when they otherwise wouldn't be doing work. It doesn't detract from the game in any way, and it doesn't, you know, cut away from it. It, it doesn't have an impact on gameplay. That's fine. Sure, you get an option of a new hat. I don't, I, don't, I don't mind an option of a new hat. Gameplay, on the other hand, we've got a lot of problems here. For a start, there'll be the argument that, you know, you're taking valuable focus time away from the core game to put it into an exclusive mission or something, or presumably more than just a mission, maybe, uh, that will just go to one retailer. And then you've also got the argument that the, the mission won't be integrated into the storyline properly because it's got to be tacked on. Um, and then it'll be like, well, it doesn't gel with the story, it makes the game feel crapper. But then there'll be the argument that if it is worked in too well, it'll be like, well, why doesn't everyone get this? It's kind of core to the storyline. There are just so many problems with exclusive gameplay content. And it's also, the big one is, it's taking time away where they should be focusing on the rest of the game, the game that everyone will get. Because the people who are doing the, you know, coding, and some of the things like the models and so on, will be making stuff for missions. If this mission is exclusive to a publisher or one of a retailer like GameStop, this means that everyone else will not be getting hold of that, and it also means that the people who have been putting effort in are actually being focused on doing this mission when they should be doing bug crunching. Because right now, a lot of AAAs are coming out with a lot of bugs. And it's because they can't adequately manage their production cycle. So by getting exclusive content, you're putting more work on them. Why? This doesn't make sense on any level. We hate pre-orders, generally, as gamers. At least a lot of us do. And we should hate them pre-orders, but... <sighs> games stop like, yeah, we're gonna do more pre-orders. I mean, it makes sense from a financial point of view for them, because people fucking love them. Don't know why, but people absolutely love their pre-orders. And by going, right, we've got an exclusive mission. What do Amazon have? They've got a baseball camp. Well, obviously you want the mission, so you should pre-order it from us. It makes sense from a financial point of view, but it's awful for gamers. This is one of the reasons I just don't hold with AAAs. The GameStop have been doing these high-level talks with, apparently, some big publishers and so on, which, you know, probably does mean EA or Ubisoft, or both. Um, as, you know, the two very American-based publishers and developers. But, I... Triple <sighs> A's, right? Anyway, that was pretty much exactly what I was going to cover today. But, um, someone did bring to my attention an article that was written a week ago. Now, this article was written a week ago, so the news itself is probably... probably being covered, and you've probably heard of it. However, I only read the actual article itself the other day, and it's full of fallacies. So I'm actually going to mention this, right? The chief operational officer, 
the director of operations for EA said that uh, Peter Moore said that gamers are uncomfortable with change. Okay, generally most people these days are uncomfortable with change. It's a nature of our society that we live in. People are uncomfortable with change, but you know, gamers are uncomfortable with change. For a start, he said this on a, on a gaming journalism website, which gamers read. So he's, he's basically slightly insulting gamers there, to their face. He's like, I, I don't understand, are you trying to get more bad publicity? This is obviously bad publicity. Pub this is bad publicity. Sorry, too early in the morning, obviously. <sighs> it's obviously bad publicity because you're saying it to gamers through, you know, a gaming journalism website. I, I don't understand. You're deliberately mouthing off gamers to them. I mean, if you were saying it to the, the stockholders, being like, well, gamers are comfortable with change. This is why our latest project called Dungeon Keeper milked them for all their worth um, failed. But then again, surely that should be your job to understand the demographic who are buying your games. Right, so let's look at some of the quotes that he said. Right, for a start, the one big, the big analogy he used is, oh, well, it's a change. Games have to go with the change. They don't understand the change. He said that the example is uh, the music industry, the advent of MP3s. The music industry went, oh, well, we're going to put loads of songs on a CD, and there's only two you care about, and we're going to charge you $17 for that CD. And people went, uh, no. Napster appeared, and they were like, oh, we'll do Napster instead. And he said, oh, well, you know, we have to go with the change. It's like, well, actually, you're the CD companies in this one, because you're the one perpetrating the change. You're the one saying you want free-to-play games, right? And we're the consumers. So what you're saying is that the change is towards piracy. Because, you know, if you're, if you're milking customers for more than is fair, the change should be towards piracy, or you know, at least in the case of the music industry. So for some reason, this seems to make piracy actually a you know, fairly good option from what he's saying. Um, huh? He, I think he's going with, oh, well, you know, we need to do this change, otherwise, you know, the music industry, the game industry will collapse. It's like, but no, you're the people perpetrating the change. You're not going with the flow. You're a big publisher. You're perpetrating the change. You are the change. This is the problem. He also then went on to say, oh, well, you know, it's like being a canoeist in a, in a trying to go upstream in the rapids. You can either go try and go upstream and fail, or you can go with the flow. No, because again, you're the stream. I mean, you know, the gaming industry is a lot bigger than EA. I understand this, right? So you can't hold EA accountable for everything. But EA is probably the biggest publisher that's pushing free-to-play, you know, transactions right now in games. Or at least microtransactions in games. And the problem is EA are doing this a lot of things. Like, they're not trying to make Battlefield free-to-play. They're putting microtransactions into Battlefield and still charging for the box. They're trying to have both of their, you know, cakes and eat them. Um, I just, I don't understand any of his arguments. They're all based on the fallacy that EA is the one going with the change. When in fact, EA is the one perpetrating these changes. Because they want more money. They are the people selling the CDs for $17. And the people turning to Napster will be the people turning to Pirate Bay. Admittedly, you can't do it with a free-to-play game, because a free-to-play game uh, by its very nature kind of defeats a lot of the copyright systems, which I think is what they're going for on these, you know, oh, for mutual free-to-play games, then there won't be much piracy, but people will just find a way to hack them and then pirate them, or, you know, send out hacks that just... Infinite money is in Dungeon Keeper. I'm sorry, but th this one really got to me, because the entire article just seems to build on these fallacies, and it seems to just decry gamers through gaming journalism, to gamers. It's like, well, I don't understand. Were you, are you aiming for more about press? And like, the last two news things, all the news things I've done right up until now, including this one, have mentioned EA being arseholes. And, and it's not because I'm deliberately picking on EA, it's because every time I've looked for news, EA's been the one being an arsehole. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm just waiting for Ubisoft to screw up. Uh, but, you know, The change right now in gaming is indies are becoming big because of the whole, you know, interconnected web, YouTubers, game journalism startups, social media. Indies can get the word of mouth around a lot easier than they used to. That's the change. Yet we see a lot of people like EA and Ubisoft consolidating their power base into strong franchises and just reiterating the same thing over and over again and not going with any change. I mean, you've got Battlefield Hardline coming out. 
What is it? It's Battlefield. What's the change? Oh, it's cops versus robbers. Are there any gameplay changes? Not really. This sounds the perfect time to get some asymmetrical gameplay in there. Nope. We had Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag. It's a pirate game, but an iteration of the Assassin's Creed franchise because Ubisoft didn't want to start a new franchise because they were too scared. The issue we have right now is publishers not trying to go overflow, not launching new titles. They, they're being very stagnating. They're getting afraid of, I presume afraid of the current market trend towards these indies and these new franchises, and they're just trying to consolidate their power bases, which ultimately is going to lose some goodwill, and it's going to result in the erosion of, eventually, people playing their games as they lose more and more, you know, unique assets. I've been Enter Elysium. This has been a slightly Nyong news episode since we're now, you know, putting two things in at once. At least I have indies, right? Stay shiny.